No, I think she's ready to go. I think she's okay. Well, good evening. As most of you know, I'm Mike Haleska, and I'm superintendent of schools for the Decorah Community School District. Mayor Borowski, City Council, City Manager Bird, thank you for allowing us time to speak with you this evening. I'm joined by school board members Ron Fodness, John Yelly, Brian Petersburg, Cindy Chisel, and Krista Vandenbrink. Also with us are a number of our shareholders, including co-chairs Mark Lovelace and Emily Neal. Elementary Principal Rick Varney is with us, and District Architect Nick Hildebrandt. Speaking on behalf of the district will be Mark Lovelace, Brian Petersburg, and Nick Hildebrandt. The council members have received a copy of the entire PowerPoint for this evening, so I hope it makes it a little bit easier for you to follow along with us. So without further delay, I will turn this over to Mark Lovelace. Okay, uh, first of all, I'd like to echo Mike and thank you for your time. Obviously, there's, there's a lot of big issues going on in Decorah these days, and uh, your time is very valuable. No doubt about it, this has been a complex issue with no simple solutions. It's not necessarily about being right or wrong, but instead <clears throat> trying to figure out what is best for Decorah and what's best for Decorah schools. Because, it's, because of its complexity, please settle in. We could be here a while. <laughs> I've been known to discuss this topic uh, for two, three, even four hours at a time. And that's been the last couple of weeks, months, and even years. Obviously, that's a joke. In all honesty, in consideration of your time, we have tried to condense this presentation without sacrificing the critical pieces of the discussion. The common theme tonight is we want to collaborate because nothing is more vital to the community than the education of our kids. I'm Mark Lovelace. I live at 305 Grove Street, and I'm here to speak with you not only as a co-chair of shareholders and an advocate of Decorah Schools, but somebody that went to Luther College about 25 years ago, was roommate all four years with a Decorah graduate, married a townie, <laughs> student taught first grade with Pat Seeker at John Klein, taught fifth grade at Eastside Elementary when Gary Crawford was on sabbatical. I've coached several years in the district, and now I'm a parent and a business owner. So I guess one could say I'm here as a vested member of Decorah Schools, as well as our city and community. Eleven years ago, our family decided to move here from Chicago. This was a move for quality of life and our schools. We had, a high, we had high expectations, but this move has blown us away. Both the community and the schools have provided our family with countless opportunities. Grab a newspaper, look at Decorah News. Kids in this communi community are challenged on many, many levels and given opportunities that go well beyond the average classroom. About 10 years ago, my wife and David Grouse had a crazy idea. They thought a walking school bus would be a great idea. Shortly thereafter, a couple of other walking school buses were formed on the east side of town. Well, the inevitable happened. Winter approached. One parent called David Grouse and asked how, he thought, how long he thought it would last, almost challenging him to how many days can you make it. Well, as it turned out, they walked straight through winter. The younger siblings joined in in the years to come. They continued for years and years, and eventually they graduated to walking as a group without parents, without volunteers. Many of those students are still walking today, over nine years later. As Brian Petersburg will elaborate on later, this is much more than just walking to school. It's about providing students an opportunity for independence, self-empowerment. We hear from business owners downtown talk about, about how great it is to see students navigate the downtown, shop for birthday parties, 
purchase holiday gifts for family. It's also about kids gaining a sense of belonging, being interconnected to the community, having empathy towards a larger world around them. We hear from people in town about how they've enjoyed seeing our kids grow up over the years while walking to school. And, and recently, we've heard a few say, or probably more than a few say, uh, hey, your son, he needs to look up, enjoy the day, stop looking at his phone. <laughs> I guess it takes a village. <laughs> Call me crazy, but I don't look at this John Klein issue as a problem. I look at it as an opportunity. An opportunity for Decorah to once again be a model community, one that values education as the core of our future. But in order to accomplish this, we need your help. This brings us to tonight. You will hear more reasons about why we are here again, asking to collaborate on the city-owned property downtown. We will talk about the benefits that this downtown currently provides the school district and an opportunity for further benefits to Decorah as a whole. And we will give you a glimpse of what, what this could be, what it could look like. We also receive a few asks tonight from the school board. One, let's approach this as a partnership. Not about location, but what best could be in that location downtown. Two, allow open forums for the community to be educated, voice ideas, ask questions. And three, the school board will present a renewed proposal. So let's get started about why downtown and some quick history behind this location. Shareholders were given the task of looking at a feasibility study for John Klein approximately six years ago. Little did I know what I was getting into. We were asked to analyze new versus renovation and make a recommendation to the school board. After touring John Klein and Westside schools and digesting the information in the feasibility study, we made a unanimous recommendation to the school board in January of 2013 to build new. We were then also asked at that time where would you prefer to see the school built? In town was the resounding response. The school board then proceeded to vet different locations throughout town, ranging from, potential, from potentially utilizing Northwind School to condemning abandoned buildings. And it became apparent that the current downtown location was preferred, but it would need additional land because of the required foot, footprint that the new school would need. A larger cafeteria, a real-sized gym, increased sections per grade level, larger, more appropriate space for child, early child care, a state-of-the-art section for students with special needs, as well as connecting West Side and adding third graders to the building. It just was too large for the existing property. The school has since approached the city a couple times to discuss further. In this past March, I believe the city council heard from a good number of people that the school and, and city needed to work together to figure out a solution. Since, since March, a few things have happened. The school board and park rec tried to secure land north of Walmart to help with the softball complex. Luther opened discussions about offering a piece of Anderson Prairie. And Ossie Haugen offered land near Venium. Unfortunately, the land north of Walmart was purchased by a large retailer. Luther College determined that Anderson Prairie and an elementary school were not a good match within their vision and mission. And the Venium location has since been reevaluated by the school board. Unfortunately, the location near Venium would sacrifice many of the added values of our current John Klein location. It would cost the community much more than just that dollar for land acquisition. This location would demand increased cost to infrastructure, enhancements to intersections, robust changes to Locust Road, increased transportation costs for the district and households, as well as potentially adding a new road to access this location. So this brought us back to downtown. Decorah and Decorah schools are fortunate to have received many awards and distinctions over the last several years. From Midwest Living and USA Today 
to blogs, magazines across the country. Something is great about Decora. Many things are great about Decora. But one thing for sure is it is the people. We have a vested approach to our community. We are committed to our business district and we put a high priority on education. Maybe it's the crater <laughs> or our topography, but fortunately, we have been able to keep our core strong in the heart of the valley. It has helped to create a synergy that makes this community tick. One may say, what is synergy? How can we measure it? But I think we all have been part of teams, groups, committees, partnerships, where things are okay or sometimes dysfunctional. Then sometimes, if you're fortunate, you've been part of something special where things gel, the unexpected happens, and you exceed way more than ever was expected. This is Decora. It's not always easy, but we have it, and we must continue, continue to build upon it. The shareholders have talked about what do we want from our schools, or how does location have to do with this overall equation? It was always in our gut, downtown, the link between community and schools. And now I'm going to share with you a few examples that have helped validate our gut feeling. Place-based schools. Place-based education. Place-based education immerses, immerses students in local heritage, culture, landscapes, opportunities, and experiences as a foundation for learning. and encourages teachers and students to use the schoolyard, community, public lands, and other special places as resources, turning communities into classrooms. It is this, the heart of the valley, that we have been fortunate to be doing it right. And these journals here, a few, few photos, continue to solidify the downtown location. Here's a handful of uh, journal studies, organizations that, uh, that continue to back what we're doing currently with our schools being in the center of our community. And the EPA uh, study, which was, they were charged to develop a site planning resource for schools about 15 years ago. There's five bulleted points that kind of summarize the whole study. Avoid building schools in remote locations. Maximizing proximity to program support f facilities. There they're talking about post office, library, fire stations, those type of things. Develop joint use agreements with your community. Consider proximity to your other schools and avoid locations that will require new infrastructure. Then in, uh, there's an international conference, uh, and this was published in Science Direct. There's a great quote talking about site selection. Teaming up together and using innovative solutions, school districts and cities should place schools where they take maximum advantage of present resources, are easily and safely accessible, and can be looked at as real community anchors. So I guess we've been doing it right all along. Let's continue to build on this foundation that is Decorah Schools. Coming back downtown, the considerations and opportunities for improvements, it, we, we kind of gathered these things along the way, uh, especially shareholders early on and pass it off to the school board, but some of these things are, are quite obvious. Um, unfortunately, I should have shifted one around, but first and foremost, safety in the education of our students and safety for our staff. And that comes with entrances and exits, security of the building, as well as its proximity to fire stations, police, station, police departments and emergency response, traffic flow, reduce and avoid congestion. We have an opportunity to separate bus and parent drop-offs with a new, renewed look at the space. Uh, transportation costs, safe routes to school, which is, is thriving in decor and continues to. Parking for staff, parents, high school students. Cooperative learning environments, features that can benefit the community. Age appropriate playgrounds. A reallocation of grade levels, both west side, third grade. Forward thinking space allocation as we go, you know, looking out the next 50 years. And then to have fiscal considerations, use of existing infrastructure and transportation costs. 
So with that, I introduce Nick Hildebrand, architect from Emergent out of Cedar Falls. He will give you a sneak peek into our future of both the core schools and our business district. One that can continue to make a positive impact for thousands of kids over the ne next 50 plus years, maximizing the benefits of this parcel. Thanks, Mark. Good evening. Uh, my name is Nick Hildebrandt with Emergent Architecture. Uh, I want to start off by saying uh, how much I've enjoyed working with the school district over the last five, six, seven years, as well as in your community, uh, especially on the, the high school renovation project. I'm very proud of how that project turned out, and I, I feel it's very representative of your community, uh, how you readapted that building. And from the things that are hosted there, such as the pancake dinner, it sounds like it's successful and a big part of your community. And that's what we're here for, is to kind of talk about that. Uh, this project we are super excited about because it has the ability to have an amazing impact on your students by providing a state-of-the-art 21st century learning environment that is community-centered. Uh, the, the first step, obviously, in planning such a, such a building is picking the correct site. As many of the opportunities for learning happen outside the walls of the school. Each community is unique, but as Mark has mentioned, there are many guidelines for many organizations that we look to to kind of guide the picking of the, of the site and choosing the location for that school. Uh, one of those is safe routes to schools. Uh, in looking at the, the EPA study, they talked a little bit about distance of students being able to walk to school. And they found that elementary students most specifically want to be within a half a mile to have that ability to be able to walk to the school. So locating the school in a location that allows the most amount of students to walk to that school would be most ideal for safe routes to school and um, becoming part of that central community. Another piece of safe routes to school is that students really start, that start their careers walking, continue to walk to school. Uh, Safe Routes to School has found that this promotes healthy living and gets a large amount of the recommended exercise needed by each student per day just walking to and from school. Uh, Mark had also mentioned that the EPA study, uh, he, he mentioned that uh, to avoid building schools in remote locations is one of the, the first criteria for that. This is a, uh, an aerial image of your, your community and it, it kind of very plainly shows the density in which your community has within the green circle as well as kind of the central downtown area. Um, looking a little bit closer on that, we start to recognize that Number two from the EPA talks about maximizing proximity to program support facilities. You can see within that yellow circle, there's such things as the fire station, the city hall, parks and rec, theater, museum, post office. Uh, all of your main street businesses are within that, that downtown area and within that half a mile circle. Your public library, your county courthouse, as well as all the other school locations. Uh, third point in the APA was developing joint use agreements. The school is, is obviously very um, excited about the opportunity of developing joint use uh, agreements with you and it sounds like you have a very good relationship between you and the school sponsoring events there and, and having events such as Parks and Rec and, and pancake dinners, obviously. <laughs> um, Considering proximity to other schools, as you can see in this slide, in the red uh, circles is, is all the locations of the schools. Uh, the upper left obviously being the west side, which in this proposal we would talk about vacating. So we actually are getting even closer proximity to all of the district schools, which allows for synergy among the teachers, among the students, and among um, all the attributes that go along with the school. Uh, 
Uh, the last piece kind of from the EPA is avoiding locations that will require new infrastructure. infrastructure. Current discussions have been centered around two sites and the guidelines that which many organizations stand behind as well as practical planning suggests that the downtown school location meets most of the requirements and suggestions from these different um, guidelines. So now I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into the initial schematic design that we've put together. Uh, we, we spent a quite a bit of time as we did the facility review studying the program of the existing school as well as the projected growth by the school district uh, along with the, the facility and what it had to offer. And as Mark had mentioned, the, the conclusion that came to building a new facility. Uh, the, the work that we have done here is by no means the final answer. There's a lot of vetting that needs to happen with yourself, uh, school district employees, about a lot of things. And specifically on this diagram, this starts to talk a little bit about traffic and the siting of the school. Uh, you can look at here, uh, one of the big points that's, that's brought up is parking. Um, if you look a little bit about at parking, the current location for the entrance to the school is right here. Uh, you can see that uh, by the addition of the parking lot over to the left, we would get a significant amount of additional parking. So we would move uh, the people that work within the school from the lots that are currently in front of the school as well as across uh, State Street here to a lot that would be directly west of the school. The movement of that allows for a bunch of these parking stops, spots to free up in front of the school. Uh, that would also be used by staff that would either be at the high school, which is actually just as close probably to the high school as the elementary, uh, as well as some visitor parking. As you can also see here in some of, in, in the way that the traffic would work, you can see that I'm suggesting stacking for parents along uh, Claiborne here. That is just on the north side of the school. So one of the, one of the main concerns is the congestion that, is, that happens uh, at, at later part of the school hours as, as parents stack up there to pick their students up. They'll park right in the middle of the streets. What we're suggesting here is actually to use that parking that we're able to replace in different areas on the site and use that for stacking after hours and before school. Sorry, I'm getting kind of some feedback there. <laughs> if, you, if you just move it, the, the speaker away from you just a little bit, that might help. That might help, okay. Um, so a little bit more about the stacking. That stacking then allows for the, the parents to pick up and drop off and stack actually all the way over to State Street. And so you can see that would be one directional through the site. Um, it allows for a lot more safe, a lot safer drop-off situation. The front entry here, right here, is defined. Uh, but as they're stacking up, they, they certainly could stack up all the way to State Street. And then we're also only allowing them to do a right turn onto State Street, which, which doesn't allow traffic then to turn and come back to Claiborne, uh, allowing more congestion on Claiborne. And this stacking would only happen during certain hours of the day. And then after those stacking, after those times, that would be able to be used for parking. The, the other thing I want to point out on this, this site diagram is the separation of the drop-off uh, for the parent parking and the bus loading. So the bus loading would actually come um, from over from the corner of Hively and Claiborne, uh, come over into this direction and, and do bus loading off of the west side of the school. That is a very typical design in, in new schools or existing schools to try to separate the, the, the bus and the parent drop off as if you guys have kids and, and know that situation that can become very congested and very unsafe for parents and kids weaving through buses and traffic. Uh, this allows those buses then to turn around in that parking lot and be able to go back to the other uh, location which would be back to the, the middle school. Uh, other things I want to start to point out, uh, we also would have a very large community green space. This would be a shared 
green space uh, that would be utilized by the school district during hours for uh, recess. Also located along that side are uh, playgrounds. So there's an age appropriate playground located here along with solid, surfaces, solid surface playgrounds with basketball courts and things of those nature that you'll see later on in some of the images. Uh, also over to the, to the northwest side of the site is a, a early childhood playground area that is in the upper left hand corner of the plan here. <coughs> so in that piece we're actually uh, creating a natural playground area which kind of replaces the natural playground at the West Elementary. The, uh, the playground here is also another age appropriate along with the solid or hard surface playground here. This allows for these kindergarten classes and the early childhood classes to exit directly out of their classroom and have safe travels right to those playgrounds to be able to use those. That also has a fence around it as you'll see in some of those, uh, some of the images later on that really starts to uh, get the protection needed for those younger age kids. The other thing I wanted to point out on this diagram is the outdoor classroom spaces. Uh, really have an outdoor art classroom, uh, perhaps an outdoor garden towards the market location which might allow the kids to be able to grow food and sell it during the market time. Uh, this parking lot would also serve as parking space for the market uh, during the weekends. Uh, as well as space outside of the library media center for outdoor reading and outdoor classroom space. Uh, digging in a little bit deeper in the floor plan, in the upper right hand corner you can see the, the school entry. That school entry comes into a vestibule. Uh, this plan was, was really done, the schematic design was really done with collaboration in mind. Uh, in partnership with, with uh, the city as well as Park and Rec. Uh, this vestibule would have the opportunity to be able to either funnel traffic into the front office which requires people then to be checked into the school which allows that safe and secure entrance. But also after hours we would be able to lock the vestibule down and direct people into the gym. And you can see the locker rooms that are just on the north side of the, of the gymnasium. That would, that would allow the gymnasium and those locker rooms to be used after hours and then be able to come directly outside. The other way to use this uh, community use or, or uh, parks and recs or tournaments would be to open up the commons as well as the, the kind of kitchen area and be able to have either um, pancake breakfasts, breakfasts or, or something of that sort within the commons. Also to the south of the gymnasium you'll see the, a music room that is attached to the gymnasium. That is actually a raised platform music room which would be a, a kind of stage or amphitheater within the gymnasium allowing for uh, performances to happen within the gymnasium. Just to the south end by the music room is the art room which is located uh, by outdoor art classroom space. Uh, also by kind of the, the wet and dirty area around the kitchen and the storage and laundry space to the, to the south here. Deliveries would happen kind of tucked back behind the grade hill here. Um, and then as we move through the rest of the school, you can see a, a kindergarten uh, learning community to the north. That's the blue. Uh, that has individual toilets as well as individual entrances. The early childhood center over to the left also has their individual individual toilets and then the first grade learning community on the south side which is all of these are kind of located around collaboration spaces which act as um, breakout spaces for different types of learning to happen within the school. Second floor really uh, is, is more of the learning communities. As Mark had mentioned, the, uh, the third grade is proposed to be moved to this location, which then alleviates some of the stress that is on the other buildings with uh, large numbers within uh, the other school sites. Second grade also has a learning community on that, on that south side. And then the traffic of this you, you can see there's a stair towards the back which allows for uh, early morning the bus, the, the people, to, the students to be able to come upstairs 
And then the, the stairs down into the commons allows for the traffic to flow down into the lunchroom uh, during lunch periods. In, in doing our design for uh, school districts and any building really, we, we really like to look at what, what the building represents. Uh, and in looking at that, we really want to look at Decora, the school district, and, and what kind of aspects of the community can we reflect in that design. Uh, in here you can see, uh, as you all know, your downtown, the, the beauty of the downtown, the different materiality, the different colors, the height of those buildings, the bluffs, the nature that happens within here, the limestone, um, as well as uh, the nature that happens within this downtown area within the crater. <laughs> Uh, so this starts to look a little bit at the, what this school could look like. This is a, this, uh, an image of the secure and accessible entrance. You can see a lot of different materials going on, kind of representing the downtown. Uh, a lot of different colors, being playful for the elementary students to really start to recognize and, and have some individuality of their school. Uh, you'll also see limestone by the front entrance. That is to hearken to the, the, the bluffs as well as uh, the mill located here in downtown. Uh, you'll also see this kind of random patterning on the glass, and you'll see that in other images. Uh, this is really to, to start to mimic uh, the idea of an eagle's nest or nature and trees within the community. Uh, the, the, the front color of the blue starts to define that entrance and then bringing in natural landscape with the rocks and the boulders instead of just park benches and things along those nature. Uh, this starts to look at the green space uh, adjacent, to the, adjacent to the school, the playground and the, the perhaps natural barrier we could create with maybe uh, something that resembles a stream or a, or a river that, that actually used to run in this location. Uh, also the boulders and natural landscape and the possibility of a, of a band shell out in the, in the open space for community use as well as district use. This view starts to look at the way that the traffic comes in. You can see the truck and how it would pull in and, and drop off kids at that front entrance. There are canopies to allow the kids to get out of the rain or elements. Uh, right at the front entrance as well as coming out of the red gymnasium there which brings you directly out to the playground. For the back side this starts to show the the solid surface playgrounds that are located next to the next to the green space and how that can really support a public park out there uh, after hours and really be a great space for kids to go out and enjoy. The other canopy there you can see the the, the stone that the stone actually defines every entrance into the building and so that really calls out to uh, where you start to enter along with the canopy and that glass box then is the art room. This starts to show a little bit of, of the uh, early childhood playground area. You can see the natural boulders within that space, the solid surface, uh, but also the, the, uh, the different patterning on the glass here. So this is to start to resemble an eagle's nest, a place for the kids within the classroom to actually take a book and go be able to sit there and, and see outside of the building. It's also located on the two-story piece you can see over here. It really harkens back to kind of the natural setting that the school is in. Also, you're seeing this, this uh, blue box here. So that is the, the single story that the pre-K classrooms are located in. Uh, that is actually the collaboration space which is popped up which allows natural light into that space. That space could be used for indoor recess for early childhood or opened up to the community for um, weekend parks within the building. Also the other thing you'll see here as well as in the next slide is, is the bus drop off. So you can see kind of how that parking works and how the, the buses would drop the students off on this side and allow them to come in this back <coughs> entrance over here. This raised area here is the idea of having that outdoor classroom with a garden <coughs> close to the market um, and really could be some collaboration with the downtown area. <coughs> also you're seeing kind of the livening up of the corner of Hively and Claiborne with some signage and some, and some nice landscaping there. 
and kind of taking the place of the waste receptacles that are located there currently. This starts to look now at, at what it would look like from perhaps downtown. Java Joe's on the corner there, or at Java Johns, not Java Joe's. <laughs> uh, you can you can see how the the west side of the of the school is actually shorter than the the kind of central part, and so you, it won't take away from any of the views that any of the downtown buildings are are afforded. This starts to show the context in which the building sits. So this actually, this model actually has all the grades uh, located into it. So you can see on the right hand side how the, the height of the downtown buildings actually uh, would look right over top of the, the new building in this location and how it starts to really blend in with, with the downtown area. Um, so, so ultimately, I want to want to say again, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to show this, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Brian, who's going to have some some more information about the project. Well, good evening. My name is Brian Petersburg, and um, as uh, next time, I'm a member of the uh, the core school uh, board. Hey, Brian. Yes. Now we're going to put the microphone. Down. All right. Now we'll see if we get a little back, back, uh, back feed there. So, so anyway, I just want to thank you for uh, for letting me uh, address you guys this evening. Uh, as Mark Lovelace talked uh, about uh, and talked about where we are and uh, how we got where we are today, and then Nick talked a little bit about the building itself and uh, and how that makes sense. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about the benefits of the school district uh, and the benefits to the city and the benefits to the community. Uh, as we move forward to this project, I think we'd all agree. Uh, that we should build a building that meets the needs of our students for the next 50 to 75 years. I talked to Mr. Varney uh, a few days ago, our school principal, and asked him about the benefits of the elementary school being downtown or being town or in the core of the community. I thought he'd give me a couple items and, and uh, what, what I got was a full page uh, listing about all the things that uh, he said. He said um, he called them a list of learning opportunities. Uh, on that list uh, were places that our students walked to. The list included the post office, the library, the police station, the fire station, local and local banks. He talked about the value of being able to walk to the police station and connect with the police officers. They walked to the fire station and sit in a fire truck and learn what it's like to be a firefighter. They go to the bank and walk into the vault and learn about savings and, the, and money. They go to a local restaurant and learn how to make pizza. In class, they learn about how food is grown and harvested. Then they go to the co-op and see how food is sold and how it gets into our homes. While walking to these places, uh, they learn life lessons. They walk as a group and learn respect and how to cross the street safely. I asked Mr. Varney about the value in collaboration with the high school. Again, he gave me a list. This one's more of a page long. But a couple of things I want to talk about. He talked about the students doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring with John Klein students in the morning and the afternoon. A music group comes over during the holidays and plays music before school or at lunch. And high school students job shadow teachers. Mr. Varney talks about John Klein students going to the high school auditorium to practice her concerts in front of the high school students so they're comfortable when they perform in front of their parents. In return, the high school students go to John Klein to practice their speech programs. John Klein students watch the marching band every year as they prepare for the state performances. So the kids are learning how valuable it is to be in the marching band and, and they get a feel for that. And it's, it's an amazing, amazing time. And this all happens, this is very important, this all happens without uh, uh, having to get in a bus and waste quality education time. Another benefit of the school is being in the core of the community. Parents can leave the work to pick up their children, go to a doctor appointment, or importantly, have school lunch with their sons or daughters. Now, I realized, and I knew it, there were walking school buses, as Mark talked, I guess I didn't know Leah was uh, one of the beginning people to do that, so I'm going to have to uh, verify that. But um, <laughs> So I know they were, they were walking school buses in the morning. I knew they were there, and I knew they were walking school buses in the evening, in the afternoon. Uh, my kids have been out of school for a long time, but, but I didn't realize they are still walking school buses after school, and they're adult volunteers that uh, walk, to, they walk to the library, art house, Montessori, Crave Dance and the Clay Studio. These are all additional walking school buses than the ones you think just going to the, to the school. So he, asked, so he asked, what are the benefits to the city and the community as a whole? How can we collaborate with the community 
For one, we would have a modern, beautiful building right dab in the middle of the, of the community. And this shows a community and visitors, visitors that we value education and take pride in our community. Return visitors see a new school where once it was a gravel parking lot and a softball field. They see 2.2 2 acres of green space right again, right in the heart of the community. Oh, thanks, Nick. Um, during the day, they see a playground. And in evenings, weekends, and summer, it becomes community green space. They env just envision lawn chair nights, community concerts, Luther choirs, Nordic Fest activities, the possibilities just can go on and on and on. Now I see a community band shell here, but I don't see that being uh, a city project. I don't think the city should probably pay for that. I don't see that being a school project. But I do see uh, that's a project where the community can get involved and be part of the solution. We have additional gym space, again right in the heart of the community that can be used for park rec, after school activities in the community. We have two age appropriate playgrounds with modern playground equipment. A basketball court that we use for all ages. Have you ever been to John Klein, or excuse me, you ever been to, um, uh, to Carrie Lee or the middle school at five o'clock? You'll see parents and students run all over those playgrounds. It's, it's, I wish we had a video of it, but it's, it happens so much. But, but keep in mind, the playground then becomes a park, and so will John Klein. Probably the most important piece of this presentation tonight and I stress this, the most important piece of this presentation tonight is the fact that if you pick this school up, you pick the, the school up that we've been showing you tonight, and you move that out the edge of a town a mile, on the edge a mile, two miles, it doesn't make any difference. Any direction, north, south, west, or east, the benefits that we're talking about tonight for these kids walking to school, going to different places, either will be lost or underutilized. I went to school board convention, uh, as I go to every year, and I was talking to the playground planner, and we talked about our situation here, and he said, uh, we talked about the school playground. He goes, school playgrounds become city parks, maintained by the district. I was talking to Andy Nimrod the other day, and, um, and we shared, we were talking about the, the space, shared space that we have, gym space and women's softball fields, and the commitment uh, in, in, in our relationship. And one thing that uh, Andy said, and uh, maybe you'll verify that, but he talked about respect with each other, the, f the respect that we have uh, between the school and the city in, in these shared spaces. Uh, and finally, an important piece this to the pro the from the, is from the proceeds uh, from the sale of the property that we're going to offer later on today can be used to build a new youth baseball and softball complex. As Mark Lovelace uh, said earlier, we've looked at other locations. We've looked at lots of them. I can assure you if there's a property large enough to build a school, we've looked at it. We probably looked at five different layouts for this location we're talking about today, just alone. Try to move the softball field from one end to the other, not using the softball field. And we tried to save the softball field with that plan, but it doesn't work. We tried to save the tennis courts, it doesn't work either. Um, the, the key is, this is a major investment, and we have one time to get it right, and I hope that we can do that. We've all heard the quote, it takes a village to raise a child. I firmly believe it takes a community to educate one. It's extremely important that we build the best facility and the best location to educate our youngest students. I can assure you the board, administration, shareholders are all unanimous and agree that this is the best location. So we spend a lot of time looking at traffic flows, as Nick has said. We feel it's, it's vastly improved in traffic flow in and around the school, and we feel it's superior to any other location that we've looked at. One reason it does work is when students come in the morning and leave in the afternoon, citizens can avoid this location, and they do. For those hours that, uh, that there's a bunch of traffic, people can just go around it. Other locations we looked at, that surely wouldn't be the case. So how do we get this done? The big question. Well, we work together, a truly collaborative effort. Uh, we propose that we jointly form a task force between you guys and us and work as, as a solution to get this behind us. We pro propose that the city and school district form a task force with a specific goal. The specific goal of the task force is to take it to, and collaborate together to come up with a solution for the relocation of the softball field and the tennis courts. The task force will also analyze, take a look at the design, and offer input. One thing the task force will not do is look for another location for a school. 
While the task force is meeting the district and uh, we felt that we couldn't go out and talk to the public, it didn't make sense to do that and show them our plan when we've had conversations before and uh, we didn't think you guys weren't real, real willing to sell us the uh, sell us this land. So we felt we couldn't go out to the public and show us this plan. But we think we've got a great plan. We'd like to take it, take this out to the public, get some feedback, and hopefully that feedback, uh, well, not hopefully, we'll request and ask that the, that the community comes back with feedback to both you guys as city council members in the school district. So that leaves us a big question. So where do we go for here, from here? What's the offer? We're not calling it an offer. We're calling this a proposal or a starting point, if you will. We feel this proposal makes sense. But we want to work with you guys, the city council, to come up with a solution. So here's what we propose. We propose that the district pay, pay the city a sum of $700,000, a figure you've heard before. The city sells land between Claiborne and Hively Street. This is the area including the 24-hour parking lot in the softball field. The land, of course, that uh, joins the current John Klein School. So obviously that's in the, uh, the, in the video up here, the, the visual on the, on the lower side. The district will also transfer, uh, the city sells a property uh, east of Goose Island Drive and south of the dike. That includes a women's softball field and portions of the baseball field. The, the corner, the thing we got to see up in the upper left-hand corner, we've talked about this before, that uh, we would like to, uh, is when the softball fields are completed um, somewhere, that uh, we would turn those, that piece of property into a, a true women's softball uh, diamond. Uh, the district shall convey or transfer to the city, you'll see in the slide up here in a second, approximately 28 acres of property that we own, which begins on the south side of the dike and it extends across the river and it joins other city-owned property. So you can see it up here, the, uh, it's in red, you can't see it real well, um, but it goes across the river and the bike trails across the river. This, the city and the park rec owns all the, all the land across from that, so it's 28 acres. I think uh, we've talked to Lindsay and, and have talked to Lindsay and Chad in the past, and by doing that you guys will also have control of the dike um, and both sides of that area. You guys own the dike and the Corps of Engineers. I think uh, would think that it would be great that the city would have control of that and, and do some things with it. Also the district and the city shall exchange uh, the parcels requested by the city engineer to clean up right of ways to align the right of way along State Street, Claiborne Drive, and Riverside. I think we've all talked about this and all agree these small parcels just need to be, uh, uh, need to be given to, the, uh, to who they should belong to. Here's another thing that we haven't talked about before, but we're open to a, a reversion clause. What this reversion clause does is if in the future the school building site, if it's nev no longer used uh, as a school, uh, that'll revert back to the city. Something that um, we think that uh, as long as it's going to be a school, it makes sense. But if it's not going to be a school, we think the city should have the land back. We're also establishing, uh, we're willing to, to establish a long-term joint agreement for gym space, women's softball field, and other shared facilities. We've got along great with Andy in the past, and, and uh, if, uh, if it would make sense to sign an agreement that, that uh, talks about us all in green, we're, we're open for that as well. And of course, it's subject to uh, the school district uh, passing a bond referendum. So, that all said, we're not asking for a vote today, but instead, we're asking for an invitation to collaborate with you, work together for the community's best interests to address mutual concerns. We recommend that we assemble a task force consisting of two city council members, two school district representatives, and the park rec director. If you think that doesn't make sense, if you think uh, it should be other than that, we're, we're surely open for suggestions. So this is basically the end of uh, my presentation and our presentation. But before we conclude, uh, I'd like to turn this over to Ben Grimstead. Um, ben and Joe uh, Grimstead from Decorah Bank both have children in the district, and they both understand the value of education and the importance of moving forward with a new school. Ben has repeatedly said, we need to move forward. We need to get this done. I've heard, I've heard Ben say, we need to get this done a lot of times. With this in mind, Ben would like to say a few words. Thank you, Mayor Borowski and Council. Thank you for listening. You've got an exciting year ahead, so thank you for your leadership and all the issues you've got ahead of you. 
Uh, as Brian mentioned, I've, I got involved in this because a little over a year, a little less than a year ago, we, uh, we tried to help by securing some land and getting an option on that property uh, as a place to relocate the softball field. And we were outbid on that, and so unfortunately we weren't successful. But we've stayed involved, and uh, we've now seen these pictures, and wow, isn't that exciting to see uh, the view, the Eagles' view here of what that could look like. And I, I don't know about you, but I think that that's a major improvement over uh, what we've got now. Um, and so, you know, what really excites us about this is not only is this going to be a, uh, a top-notch school that will meet our needs for so many years to come, uh, it's going to involve a playground which will be able to be used as a park after school hours, and then this new downtown park. That's something that our community has been talking about for a lot of years also. Uh, and if you see in the picture there, one of the things in the park could be a band shell uh, that could be used for performances for both the school and the community use. And so that's something that really excited us because it's something that we talked about many, many years ago. And so, you know, maybe instead of us helping out with uh, securing some land and, 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 and relocating the, the softball fields, uh, the folks at the school said, well, maybe you can help out by uh, helping uh, generate some monies for, for a park setting like this. And so that got us pretty interesting. So the bottom line is, you know, our school board and uh, school officials and shareholders, they've been look at, looking at this, at this for years. And they keep talking about all the places to put this thing, and it keeps coming back to this location here. This location here isn't owned by them, it's owned by the city. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a softball field there, so we've got a hurdle that we've got to get over. And uh, what Brian's asking for is to, to help us do that. And, and I think it's really important, and I hope that we can get that done. And I hope that in a few years we'll be looking at a property like this. And so we just said whatever we can do to help get this going. And so you know we started off by saying that we make a pledge to invest uh, $250,000 in, uh, in a downtown park or something with this project if it's successful, and uh, just to kind of help get some energy behind so I don't know if that's an appropriate thing to do or say, but um, but it just tells you that we're behind it. And so I wanted to, to say that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. So uh, in closing, I'd like to, to uh, read this little quote up here, a commitment to the future. The appearance of a school, particularly the exterior of the building and the grounds, sends a message about the community's convictions and commitment to education, and its students, teachers, staff, parents, and other citizens. That positive image can reflect on the entire community and it says to everybody, we care and we're committed uh, to providing a high quality education. So we hope that um, you guys can uh, work together with us and we can all can try to uh, come to a common ground to uh, make this school uh, a reality. So thank you. I appreciate the extensive work that's gone into this plan and the presentation that you have. Um, I'm going to make a couple comments and then I think you still have good weather if there's any, any of the council people that might have questions. Sure. Um, I definitely agree about the core, you know, right in this area is the, the heart of the valley and uh, being in the bowl. Um, we too agree with the value of being in the bowl. When I speak from the city end of, of it as well, and our existence in here, I think the other piece is your collaboration and partnership is key. I think it's key for all of us. We have uh, a lot of moving parts that are kind of floating around uh, along with the school as well. Uh, if I just think of them, you know, we think about the city needs that we have, but we're looking into those pieces sure. as far as, as and stuff. Uh, we look at park and recreation, uh, you know, and the value of, and you've mentioned that as far as working with the school. Uh, we have uh, a group, groups out there that are working on um, community visioning. And uh, not only was the school very valuable, they raised children that came back and lived here. Very 
educated and qualified children that are now adults and have their own children and that uh, community visioning I've been in on some of those discussions and sometimes after the meeting you learn a lot and you, there's uh, people out there that would like to just even have like a dreaming or a vision dump on how they would see not so much moving some things around but just what the possibilities would be you have people with a community center that have visions as well and getting input from those people and a, a wellness center and so right at this particular point we have the opportunity to have some visioning uh, and to look to see how can we can partner. You know as well as I do when you're looking to pass a referendum, you're going to want to go broad based to see how that can be of, of value. Those are just some comments. I, I know that I have been working with the, the um, community visioning people, but also just being able to get people together like to work towards getting some people together like in April and you've got you've also put down here open forums to be able to have open forums where individuals can come and talk share look at what you have put forth to it's a lot of information and it's a lot for people to kind of understand but uh, comments <coughs> Just a quick question, um, and maybe it was covered, and I apologize if it was. I don't want to make an assumption, but uh, would the current existing John Klein building be used while this is constructed? Is yes, it would. Okay. Yeah. Just make it yep. Also, we, uh, we've determined um, that uh, we had some questions about North Winnesheek School. Uh, when they come down here, uh, do we, are we going to have enough room for them, for their students? And the number of students they have coming into the district, uh, we can absorb them into our classrooms sure. uh, fairly comfortably too. But yeah, John Klein, that's a big part of it. You know, the less, less we will know the cost. So John Klein would stay there while we build the building and then John Klein would be tore down. Sure. Brian, can you talk a little bit about the length of time frame we're looking at? Like, when would you be looking for a decision based on our collaboration moving into a bond, and what does build out look like from there? Well, we um, we did talk to our bank, and we do have access to that seven hundred thousand dollars. So, if you want to accept that next week, we could probably get this going <laughs> a lot quicker than I initially anticipated. But thank you for the offer. <laughs> um, you know, Nick could probably answer that better than I can. Um, it's it's going to take a while. You know, it's it's going to take a while. We probably we even think if if we had a solution to the softball fields, we might even have softball fields built before, you know, before we, we would actually need them. So, Nick, um, year and a half. You know. I think her question was to get to the bond issue. To, to the bond issue well, itself, yeah, or, or for, towards the full, I think the full project. To that, yeah. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, it's pretty much a dependent the defense bond how fast we can resolve some issues mm -hmm. as far as tennis courts and softball diamonds. Uh, if that could be resolved quickly, we'd be looking hopefully at September. Mm -hmm. If not, then just as you're affected by special dates for elections, we are too. And I think it throws our next date after that to somewhere around December or January. As a matter of fact, I was just going to look that up. but. I know it's one of those two months, so um, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily speed things along the way we would like. Could you uh, highlight the difference, the differences between this proposal and the one that we voted unanimously against in 2016? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's you know several different things. You know, we've uh, not only did we go out to the public, there's you ought to to look at different sites, and we came back. So that really hasn't changed. Um, but a couple things that have. Um, one, we've got this commitment to, um, from, from the bank that they're willing to work with us. Uh, we're also looking at to collaborate with you guys. You know, we, uh, before, uh, we've, we gave you a proposal and said, you know what, um, this is what we'd like to have. And, um, and we didn't sit down and say, hey, 
what can we do to work this out? So that's, that's a little bit different. We're, we're, we want to truly work with you guys to come up with these solutions. Uh, we have some ideas in places for softball field, and we have a great, great idea of a place for the uh, tennis courts. Um, but we want to collaborate with you guys, so that's something we haven't done in the past. Um, asking the, the input from the community, I think that's, uh, it's not different from that financial piece from, from, uh, from, from the offer, but it's still part of it. Um, one thing that, uh, you know, I'm going to say it, we didn't get it the last time we talked, we didn't get to, um, to talk to the whole city council. We talked to a committee. So I think uh, by taking a look at the plans and, and the, the building and stuff that we have, I think it's great that the whole committee is able to see it. We think we've got a better plan. You know, the plan itself uh, for the traffic situation that we're, we're dealing with, uh, the layout of the building, uh, the great large green space, um, and just the way that we can show it to, to you guys, the community is a little bit different as well. So, um, oh, yeah, the, that, uh, that the clause we talked about, um, that uh, the property itself, that, uh, that if it didn't become a school sometime that are out down the road 50 years or 75 years, that's another, that's another uh, piece of the puzzle as well. Thanks, Mark. Oh, in the uh, the twenty some acres that uh, that across the, the land, there across the uh, the property over here that uh, um, that we would uh, deed over to the city as well. Joanna, yeah. just to mention uh, September of two thousand eighteen, and then the first Tuesday in December of two thousand eighteen would be the next one. Thank you. Brian, you, there's no hop on this. <laughs> Brian, sure. you mentioned, um, and I have spoken with you previously about a desire to have additional community input in this process, yep. and very much respect and am thankful that you came here and offered this presentation before starting that. Sure. Um, what sort of, uh, what are you looking from us per se in order to start a community conversation where information like this could be presented? Um, to the citizens of Decorah and the school district. Yeah, I think really what we need, and we're ex really super, super excited about getting this, get this out to the community. You know, the community's asked for it, and uh, we felt that, uh, to be fair, that we just we couldn't do it. But now we're now it's out, and uh, we're we're pretty proud of what we have. The first thing I think we really need to do is that we need from you guys is to to let us know if you'd be interested in, in collaborating with us, mm -hmm. and I think uh, in sitting and putting that task force together. And if we don't do that, if we don't have a task force and really want to work together to make this happen, I, I don't think it would make sense for us to go out to the, to the public first. Unless you wanted us to go to the public and do some of these and get some public input, if that was important to you guys, we'd be happy to do that as well. Any other questions, comments? But I believe what we'll do is take what you've presented, digest it. Sounds great. Look at it. And if we have any questions, we can get back to you and then we can talk about to have to proceed. Do you have any idea on that? Okay, thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Hey. So, yeah, last piece, we have a little video that we'd like to share. <laughs> Very short.